um, our, our or even break. Uh, I go around looking at elephant poops because I, I'm a professional bird guide and a wildlife guide for over 18 years. I take tours, I organize tours in Malaysia, of course, uh, Papua New Guinea, Sulawesi, uh, a lot, every part of Indonesia to see birds of paradise and so on. Uh, I've seen only about 3,000 birds, uh, missed a lot of birds uh, worldwide. Uh, 20 year old countries now, uh, I've traveled. Uh, I've helped Tourism Malaysia create our first national website called uh, birdsmalaysia.my. Uh, I'm also a Leica ambassador. Uh, I'm a columnist with a local newspaper, uh, online uh, portal. And I'm lead author of Malaysia Birding Paradise. This is a brochure that's developed by Tourism Malaysia and this is circulated worldwide uh, to promote our country and our birds all across the world. Okay? Why is Malaysia special? I'm sure there are a lot of other special countries around the world, yes. But why is my country, Malaysia, special? We are, if you do not know this, we are one of the 15, one of the 17 mega diverse countries in the world. Mega diverse countries uh, hold about 75% of all known biodiversity found by men today. So, these 17 countries are very special, uh, and Malaysia is, uh, we are proud to be one of the 12, uh, one of the 17 right now, one of the 17 mega diverse countries uh, in the world. Yeah. Uh, the other countries, as you can see on the map, uh, all across the globe. Yeah. And if you look at uh, Mongabe, Mongabe has put Malaysia as number 15, number 15. Uh, of the most mega diverse country uh, in the world. I don't know how, how accurate or how true that is, but it's very interesting because we have about only about 7.1% of the world's total in terms of bird diversity. Everybody follow me so far? Everybody okay? Yes? Okay. Yes, I will... No problem. Yes, go ahead. Now, uh, where are the birds and why visit Malaysia and Asia? And that's the story of how the Asian Bird Fair also started. We were trying to promote our, our own countries in terms of our bird events. And Mike and uh, Victor, myself, we got together and decided that, hey, let's try to sell and promote Asia as one destination. Yeah, why? This is the reason. Because if you look at the world map, the most number of birds, uh, Horacio will be smiling. The most number of birds, of course, is in the neotropical areas, yeah, in South or South South America, yeah. They have about 35% of all uh, of bird species in the world, yeah. So they own the monopoly as the biggest uh, number of birds in that area, yeah. Amazing, very good. Congrats to you. But if you look on the extreme right, and you follow the arrow where Malaysia starts and where it ends. The next biggest area that has the most number of diversity in terms of birds or number of species in the world is the Oriental area. And that's where Asia is. And that accounts for about 21% of all known bird species in the country today. So why visit Asia? Why visit Malaysia? There you go. And that's how, in fact, that's how the Asian Bird Fair started. 11 years ago. Next. Okay, For those of you who have not had a chance to visit my beautiful country and do, and do not know where it is exactly, well, after today's talk, I think you will know uh, for sure. Yeah? So this is Google uh, Earth and this is my country. Uh, there's two parts to my beautiful country, West Malaysia, it's also known as Peninsula Malaysia, and East Malaysia, there are two states in East Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak, it's also known as Borneo, uh, Malaysia Borneo. Yeah? So in the, on the island of Borneo, Malaysia has two, kind of, uh, two states there in the east. Yeah? And let's go specifically into our Malaysian list. 
as it stands, um, we have about 796 species of birds uh, in our country, 595 resident species, about 200 migratory birds. Uh, every now and then we have vagrants coming in and out. Uh, and at the bottom, we have about 65, 65 endemic species. Um, and, um, and I just want to show you also at the bottom of this table, uh, although it's not endemic uh, species, but that's the great Argus. Yeah? So one of the special birds to find in our lowland rainforest. Amazing photo by Seth Prudante. Yeah? Uh, yes, I also like to mention, if I've forgotten to mention earlier, all photographs, almost all the photographs that I'm going to show you today, ladies and gentlemen, are from my friends and comrades, my colleagues in the bird watching industry. They all donated their images. It's all housed in a website called www.birdsnature.my. So please go and visit birdsnature.my. You'll see all these images and a lot more and information that I'm actually sharing with you today. Okay, so that's the great Argus. Uh, and the great Argus in our lowland rainforest, uh, it sounds like this. Times 10, times 100%, yeah? And that's how loud uh, uh, the call of the great Argus is. Yeah? And uh, I hope some of you have seen it or not heard it. If you want to see it, come visit us. Yeah? Some of the key birding sites. The key birding sites in Malaysia, I split it into Peninsular Malaysia and East Malaysia because I'm coming on the tour to Malaysia. It's very interesting. Uh, it's good to come two or more times because you can spend maybe up to two weeks in Peninsular Malaysia, flying to Kuala Lumpur International Airport, and spend two weeks uh, in Peninsular Malaysia uh, and, and hunt down all the birds in this side of the, our country. And then go across, go back home and rest, take a break, and come back again, or do another 14 days to East Malaysia, Borneo Malaysia, yeah. And there you'll find a lot, a lot of a long list of bird key bird watching sites. Most of our endemic birds are found in East Malaysia on the island of Borneo. Yeah? So the list is not exhaustive. Uh, I, can, I wanted to put more on the list, but I ran out of space. Kuala Selangor Nature Park, I think it's uh, important for uh, mangroves and coastal birds. Fraser's Hill is a highland area, so that is uh, lower mountain birds, 1,400 meters. Taman Negara is our national park. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it in a little while. Uh, that's lowland rainforests. Bukit Tinggi is also lowland. Crow is lowland. Uh, Langkawi Island, of course, uh, has amazing diversity in terms of uh, its, its birds. So the list goes on, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, visiting Peninsula Malaysia as well as East Malaysia uh, is very exciting to get, because you get a variety of uh, habitat and with uh, different types of where habitat you get and you can target different species of birds. Uh, in East Malaysia, we're going to go through the list as well and we're going to look at some of the special sites. I put together some uh, interesting key uh, bird species for each site. Yeah? So in East Malaysia, in, in Sabah, uh, of course, Kinabalu Park, World Heritage Site, Crocker Range, the Sipilok is very famous. We're going to see in a little while. Kinabatangan, uh, uh, Danong Valley, of course, world famous. Tabin, Maliao Basin, uh, the list goes on. And in Sarawak, uh, Mulu, we have Baku, we have Singilajau, uh, and Pendison Range, and Kuba, yeah, national parks. Yeah, so Malaysia offers you a great diversity in terms of its landscape, in terms of its, of its bird species. Yeah? Uh, so now let's take a look very specifically at some of the sites. I cannot highlight all the sites today, unfortunately, but here are some of the sites that I put together for you, just to give you a little taste of what's beautiful and what's flying around in this beautiful country called Malaysia. Yeah? Okay, so let's start with the uh, Peninsula of Malaysia. You're flying into, uh, into Kuala Lumpur International Airport. You take a drive four hours northeast, and there you will head to a beautiful place called Taman Negara. Taman Negara in our language and in English is called National Park our largest national park here. Yeah? Uh, it's 100 and it's reputed to be 120 million years old. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's 4,343 square kilometers. Um, 
sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's the important bird area with 380 species of birds uh, recorded uh, so far. Yeah. So that's Taman Negara and it's lowland. Here are some of the superstars and some of the key uh, bird species that you find in uh, or you hunt in Taman Negara. Yeah. So number one, this is a beautiful photo by, by my friend Bonnie Chan. She came on tour with me from Hong Kong. Yeah. We were very lucky to see this bird cross our path in the Taman Negara in the first 200 meters of our trail. Yeah? This is the Malaysian peacock pheasant, as you can see. Uh, this is actually uh, uh, giving us a beautiful look on its body. You can see the ocelis, you can see the spots on its tail. Uh, this is an endemic bird. It's pretty shy, but it's very, very loud. So if you are a, a seasoned bird watcher and you are hardcore enough, you can hear the call of the Malaysian peacock pheasant. You can hunt it down slowly okay, into the forest. And if you know how it works and how it walks and what its habit is, you sit quietly. And if you can uh, mimic its call, it's a pretty difficult call to mimic. Yeah? You can most likely see it and have a glimpse. Yeah? It's pretty shy, but Taman Negara is a good place for you to find this one. Yeah? Um, Malaysian peacock peasant. Number two, although not endemic, it's very special. This one little bird is on top of a lot of people's list. It's called the Malaysian rail babbler. Uh, puts out a loud, it puts out a loud, a sharp call. And when it calls, its throat puffs up and you can see the little blue pattern on its jugular, yeah? below the white brown, yeah? So this is a much sought after target of a, of a bird. Uh, it is really special. It's pretty rare to see. It's numerous in Taman Negara, uh, numerous, but you can hear it sometimes difficult to see because it's a skull that goes under uh, the canopy, yeah? Anyway, that's the Malaysian Real Babla. Beautiful photo by my friend Chan. One of the other superstars, this is the Crested Fireback. Why it's called the crested fireback, ladies and gentlemen? If you look at the photo carefully, you look at the back, yeah, just around the around the top from its white tail, you can see a reddish back, yeah. So the male, when it puts out its wings and it flutters, you know, you get a flash of almost red, uh, reddish back, yeah, fireback, yeah. The male is beautiful, has a blue mask with a beautiful red eye, and look at that head, yeah. Again, Taman Negara, a beautiful photo by uh, Jiti Cham again. Um, this Taman Negara is one of the best places to see this. This is the male, you know? beautiful species. You, know? you agree, right, everybody? Okay, next, globally threatened, although not an endemic, globally threatened, but Taman Negara is one of the best places uh, to see uh, on a boat. As you take a boat up uh, the, the Tahan River, in Taman Negara, you have very good chances, 60 to 80% chances of seeing the blue banded kingfisher fly around you, up and down the, up and down the river. It's globally threatened, it's pretty special, and every now and then it gives you a chance to take a, to take a photograph. Yeah? So pretty commonly sighted along the rivers of uh, Sungai Tahan in Taman Negara, ladies and gentlemen, the blue banded kingfisher. Next, we're going to move to a different side, up north, uh, bordering Thailand. This is the Royal Blum State Park, Temungo Forest and Temungo Lake. It's regarded as the world's oldest rainforest at 130 million years, even older than the Congo and Amazon. Uh, it is about a four-hour drive north from Kuala Lumpur, or it's a one-and-a-half-hour drive from the island of Penang. Penang has an, uh, has an international airport, so you can fly in. There are direct flights also from Taiwan, I think. You fly into uh, into Penang and you can drive an hour and a half in there in Royal Bloom State Park. Royal Bloom State Park is also termed, or I'm promoting it as the hornbill capital of the world, because out of the 55 species of hornbills in our in the world, 
10 species can be found only in the small area of 117,500 hectares. All 10 species, if you're lucky, on a 24-hour tour, you get to tick off all 10 species of hornbills found in Malaysia. So that's why we're calling it the hornbill capital of the world, especially in the months of July, August, September, and maybe October. The plain part hornbills fly in from Thailand and they forage and feed in the Royal Bellum State Park area. 10 species of hornbills come and get them. Also, with the hornbills, it's also home to 304 species of other birds in the area. So that's the Royal Bloom State Park. Let's take a look at some of the target species. Yeah? A beautiful photo by Anwar McAfee. Uh, this is not an easy bird to photograph, although recently a lot of photographers have gotten uh, good views of it in uh, Fraser Seal. This is, uh, this is taken a bird in flight. Uh, the helmeted hornbill, critically endangered. It's only found in three, four countries now, uh, critically endangered all around. And in Malaysia, especially in Royal Balloon, uh, it's doing pretty okay. It's doing pretty okay. There's some, there's some uh, rumors about it being hunted also here in our country. But the pair or the pairs that I've been watching in this uh, site at the Royal Balloon, there's about four pairs that I know of, are still there. And they're doing they're doing okay, yeah? but that doesn't mean they are not uh, prized or you have to be more vigilant to make sure we keep their actual locations and their nesting grounds, uh, nesting holes uh, confidential. Yeah? The Hamilton Hornby, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Anwar and McAfee. Beautiful photograph. This is the male with the red throat. Um, unfortunately, it's also the, the cask is called uh, red ivory, and when something is called red ivory, you know it's a target of poachers yeah, for its cask. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, the helmet at home. Also, uh, this is the, uh, if you're from India, you will know this very well. Yeah, Here it's called the Great Hornbill, Sai Chow, Sai Chow. Yeah? This is our biggest uh, hornbill, our largest hornbill in, uh, in Malaysia, the Great Hornbill. Uh, it's found in good numbers in Royal Balloon, uh, State Park and also all around uh, our country. It's not found in Borneo, uh, but it's found widespread quite well in the region. And uh, Royal Bloom and some of the other sites that I'm mentioning uh, are good sites to see the Great Hornbill. And in Royal Bloom, of course, this is the star of the show. Uh, four months in a year, the plain pouch hornbills fly in, as I said, from Thailand. Uh, in, in congregation groups of, uh, well, in 1980s, uh, expedition led by the Nature Society recorded over 3,000 of these birds flying in. That was in the early 80s. These days, um, because of some of the logging happening in the south, southern part of Mungo Lake, uh, the largest numbers that we've been recording or spotting is now only down to maybe between 100 to 300 only. Yeah? So it seems like it's down to potentially 20%, 30% of uh, its original population numbers that's been recorded. We don't know whether they're flying elsewhere uh, or foraging elsewhere, but in the Royal Bloom uh, area, we still find frequently uh, between the months of July uh, all the way till October. Yeah? So they fly in flocks of maybe two and sometimes the flocks of 30. Yeah, And it's amazing to see them fly. And when they congregate, congregate like that, yeah, males and females with a pouch, yeah? It's uh, such a spectacle to see. So we are lucky, Thailand and Malaysia, we are, uh, Peninsula Malaysia, we are lucky because we have this beautiful phenomenon happening where the hornbills are actually migrating all over the, our skyline. We get to watch them and amazement and take wonderful photographs. This is a wonderful photograph by Wai Yen, it's a dog spot. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and Royal Bloom is famous because it's, uh, to get around, we, we use the houseboat you can see the program with the house on the left, and that's the landscape in the bottom of the photo. Yeah? Plain park hornbills in the land of the hornbills in Royal Bloom. Next, we go to Fraser's Hill. Fraser's Hill is a hill station. It's an important bird area, IBA. It's only about an hour and a half, two hours drive from Kuala Lumpur. Uh, it is home to 12, over 247 species of birds, and there are three endemics in this area. The good thing about Fraser's Hill is pretty easy to get to. So even if you self-drive, just Rent a car, fly into Kuala Lumpur International Airport, 
rent a car, put on Google, uh, put on uh, maps or put on Waze and get to Fraser's Hill and you get to enjoy lots of birds uh, in that area. Yeah? And here are some of the key birds. This is one of the peninsula, Malay Peninsula and Dimec. This is the Malay and a laughing trash. Um, amazing photo by Wing Chun, my fellow guide, Chong Wing Chun. Uh, you, you can see the beautiful uh, eye ring around this beautiful bird, and it, it's only, it's a it's a it's a lowland upper upper highland uh, species, uh, pretty shy and not very easy to see. Yeah? So this is one bird that we target in Brazil. Yeah. Next, uh, this is the Malaysian partridge or grey-breasted partridge. Yeah, uh, Malaysian hill partridge it has many names. But we have landed on Malaysian partridge uh, very recently. Yeah? This photo I took, I was about 20 feet away from this one bird. It's a wild bird. It's crossing, it's crossing a road, a little road, and it stopped halfway. Yeah? Look at its beautiful legs. Yeah? Uh, very, very vocal. They are very gregarious. They are found in, found in flocks of between two to eight birds uh, up and down uh, ravines and slopes in, in the highland areas. They only found above 1,000. 200 uh, meters in sea level and only in uh, primary forests. This is a beautiful bird uh, for you to target and uh, it's a pretty amazing. We love it. It's you know, one of our three endemics up there. Now we're going to go move on to uh, on, on the East Malaysia and the island of Borneo. We have two states, Sabah and Sarawak, uh, where it's famous for bird watching. Uh, uh, fans and bird watching tours. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, the first place we want to highlight to you is uh, Kinabalu Park. Kinabalu Park is a World Heritage Site. A lot of people have heard it. A lot of hikers go up there and do the summit uh, because it's 4,000, just shy of uh, 4,100 meters uh, above sea level. Yeah, it's the highest mountain, it's the highest peak in uh, Malaysia. Uh, and it has, it's home to about 326 species of birds. And as you can see, 23, 23 endemics are uh, right there in one side. Yeah? Let's have a look. One of the nicest birds and the most colorful birds to see uh, at the foothills of, uh, of Kinabalu is the white hedge strogan. Uh, this photo by Liu WK. Uh, beautiful photo has taken uh, of this male. You don't even have to play its call. Uh, it's it's far. It's commonly sighted uh, along the trails. If you if you can if you can remember its call and you can whistle back, you know, uh, most likely after six out of uh, ten encounters you probably see white hedge strogon endemic to the island of uh, Borneo. Also, sharing the same name of white hedge, this is the white hedge uh, spider hunter. This is a good photo by my friend Neil Sweetick. Uh, also found in the hill areas, also found in Kinabalu Park. You can see he has a beautiful yellow wing, with a long, beautiful bill and heavy streakings on the chest. Yeah? Uh, again, not a very difficult bird to see in Kinabalu Park. So all you have to do is just get that, you know, spend some time, you know, memorize its call and you'll probably get it, you know, come to flowers and so on. Yeah? Very interesting bird, beautiful to see. Endemic, yeah. White heads. White heads brought bill, you know. Look at this bird, it's ridiculous. It's all green, it has a beautiful black eye, you know. Sometimes you you try to figure out where it's where its eye is, where its bill is, it has a beautiful little, little bill, you yeah, know, and, and a throat. Yeah, so uh, if you memorize this call again, it's not a very difficult bird to see, this endemic bird. Uh, as green as it is, it's not difficult to see. Uh, pretty cute. Pretty well recorded uh, when you do the trails uh, in, in Kinabalu Park. Again, uh, Liu has taken a wonderful photo. Thank you, Liu, for sharing this with us. Yeah. Next, we move on to Sandakan. Sandakan is another town. It's about three, four hours drive from uh, Kinabalu. Uh, it's a beautiful drive. You want to take a drive, you know, or you can fly uh, into uh, Sandakan. Uh, it's a popular photography bird watching site. It's home to Rainforest Discovery Center. I, uh, personally, I think it's one of the best uh, canopy walkways in the world. Uh, it's, it's fit for kids and uh, aged people and even uh, handicap friendly. Yeah? Uh, it's joining the Sipilok Orang Utan Center. So again, when you visit Sandakan and you go to Sipilok, uh, 
uh, you'll really want to spend two or three days there at least because you get a chance to see a lot of special stuff there. And of course, you can target a lot of special birds. And let's take a look at some of the star ones, star birds or superstars, as I say. Uh, yeah. Yes, so below the canopy calling out <laughs> uh, the blue-headed pita. This is another, this is an endemic, of course. Yeah, and you can see the color is so nice. Uh, Horatio, if you're listening, you know, uh, our pitas are pretty colorful, you know. Uh, and my friends from Colombia, you know, you showed me all the beautiful pitas in Colombia. Very nice, amazing, very, 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 very rare and very special. Yeah? But most of them lack a lot of colors, yeah. So <laughs> here you go, look at this, the blue-headed pita. Isn't it really beautiful, yeah? And again, not very difficult to see if you know how to target it uh, in, uh, in, in the Rainforest Discovery Center. Another bird that you'll find, and this again, pretty common, the white fronted falcon net. In Peninsula Malaysia, in some parts, in other parts in Asia, you have the, white, the black tied falcon net. But this one is endemic in Borneo, and this is the white fronted. Yeah? And you can see why it's called a white fronted uh, falcon net. Very beautiful. Again, Liu has taken a nice photo of this. Uh, thank you, Liu, for sharing uh, this photo. And of course, the megastar, the megastar. Everybody wants this one. There's only one of its kind in the world, and in its family, it stands alone. This is the Bonian crystal head. There are two photographs here showing you two different angles. Andrew Siani, thank you for your image. Liu, again, Liu, you're giving us a lot of nice photographs. You get to see the Bonian crystal head in two different uh, poses. This reminds me of that, that uh, the villain in Star Wars, yeah, the guy with the red head and the black cape, yeah? the baddie that no one likes. Yeah? So anyway, the Bonian Bristol head, uh, gregarious and flies in groups of, uh, in, a, in, a, in a group. Uh, and uh, Rainforest Discovery Center, the canopy area, um, two out of five groups will see. Uh, and and if you better cross your fingers that you are one of the two groups and <laughs> out of the five, yeah? So the one in this gentlemen, this is an amazing bird. I hope everybody plans to go and visit Saba and try to target this level because he's so special. Next, Kinabatangan uh, River, not too far from uh, the Rainforest Discovery Center and, uh, and uh, the Rainforest Discovery Center uh, is the Kinabatangan area. Uh, it's watershed. It's, uh, it's famous because it's the second longest river in, uh, in, in Malaysia. It's famous for its wildlife tours uh, uh, on boats. So people jump on boats and you are, and there are a lot of good guides in the area and they take you on a cruise. And from the cruise itself, you get to see spectacular, amazing stuff. Yeah. So Kinabatakan and the Sukau area, it's very good for the things like the pygmy elephant. Yeah. So our country is uh, very blessed. We have two types, not two species. We have two types of elephant. Uh, we are the only country in the world that has two types. Yeah, we have the Asian elephants, like most of you in Asia, yes. But we also have the Bonian pygmy elephants, slightly smaller, and that's only found in Sabah and a little bit in Indonesia. Yeah, right. Um, and of course, our orangutans. And this is one of the mega stars that people come and try to listen out and try to see uh, where. It shows up again two out of every five groups. One out of five groups sometimes see this. The Demonian ground cuckoo, very special. This ground cuckoo is pretty shy, pretty rare to see, and it's found in the, the, the lowlands and areas of uh, uh, Kinabatanga. This beautiful photo by Siltek, again, thank you, Siltek, for sharing. Beautiful, this one, yeah, very rare. And of course, uh, it's pretty difficult to see this one in Peninsula Malaysia, uh, but it's pretty easy if you're on the boat. It's pretty easy for you to see the storm stalks in the Kinabatangan Plains, yeah, in the river. The storm stalks is pretty nice to see and pretty amazing. Uh, beautiful yellow around the eye, beautiful red bill, yeah, long beautiful legs, yeah. Uh, pretty large, pretty large bird when it's in flight, yeah. Uh, this is a good photo by George and Teresa Baker, uh, Wire Ebert. Thank you very much. Uh, Sharing. Uh, this is a beautiful bird, yeah. Uh, in Peninsula Major, it's pretty rare, pretty, pretty, pretty rare to see. So 
is always a treat to see. And when people in, in uh, Samar tells me, ah, oh, it's so easy, we, we feel a bit jealous because it is a beautiful word, it's a beautiful stuff. Next, uh, and from Google image, I, I went to Google, and I'm sorry who's photo about this, I don't know, don't know, but these are some of the images I have to share with you. Uh, as you do the cruise in, in Kinabatangan, uh, on the little boat, you see the blue boats over there. If you're lucky, you get to see the Bunyan pygmy elephant swimming, uh, having, having a bath. And on the left, you see the proboscis monkey. They call it the Dutchman's nose. Yeah, beautiful proboscis, yeah. And of course, uh, just like a lot of countries in uh, in Asia, we also have saltwater crocodiles, yeah, estuarine crocodiles. And Sabah and Strabag are pretty large. Uh, the, the crocodiles get to pretty large size, yeah. So if you're on the boat, not only are you looking out for beautiful, endemic, interesting birds, uh, but you're also looking for mammals. And of course, a big reptile in the water, yeah. Uh, there has not been any cases where bird watchers have been eaten by the crocs, so. Fingers crossed, come and visit, it's, it's not a problem. Hire a good guy yeah? and, get, and get good insurance. Danum Valley. Danum Valley is a name that uh, is on everybody's, I think, must visit uh, list. Uh, it is 438 square kilometers of uh, pristine lowland forest. Uh, it is home to 300 species of birds. Uh, it is home to the elusive clouded leopard. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of species there also. Our Tazia is also found there. But most importantly, it is home to a research facility and it's a very famous place for people to go and visit. Um, let's have a look at some of the targets here. Look at this. Isn't, isn't this bird ridiculous? This is ridiculous this bird, yeah. It's a crimson headed partridge. Yeah. Amazing photos, a photo by Wing Chun again. Thank you, Wing Chun, for sharing, sharing with us. Can you imagine? Seeing this bird in the wild age, I mean, you know, look again, look at it, just like the Bonian bristle head, you know, beautiful combination of red and black, you know, uh, it's so amazing. Yeah? Um, and I see one of our, yeah, yeah, thank you for joining us from across the world. Hi, everybody. Yeah, so we just, we're just looking at this beautiful crimson headed partridge. Get yourself a guide. There are a lot of good guides in Sabah, a lot of good guides who can show you where this bird uh, is, is, uh, is commonly sighted, yeah? And this is something that you must see, yeah? Come and join us, this is a beautiful bird, it's beautiful endemic, yeah? Crimson native partridge. Next. There is, in Peninsula Malaysia, we have a banded uh, pita, yeah? And banded pita, just like in uh, Thailand, yeah? In South Thailand, yeah? In Borneo, they have their own endemic, yeah? It's the Bornean. Banded pita. Look at this bird. It again, I don't know whether ridiculous is a good word, to, uh, is a good term to use, but these are birds that are so special, so colorful, very striking. If they do not move, they're sitting on a forest floor. And if they do not move, most of the time you probably miss it because of its coloring. But once it hops, hops and goes onto the log like this, and you look at your binoculars on it and even your camera, suddenly the colors stand out, you know, amazing. This is a good photo by Sweetek again, yeah. Uh, your Sweetek is a very good guy uh, based in, uh, in, in Kuching. Um, he has given, he has shared with us uh, this wonderful photograph of the Bornean banded pita, of course, endemic again, pretty shy. Again, not very difficult to see. Next. Again, in the land, uh, in, the, in the world of pitas, okay, um, seeing birds like this actually, <laughs> this is the reason why a lot of people start bird watching. A lot of people get, get wowed by why, how wonderful birds are from across the world. Uh, the uh, blue banded pita, uh, although it's been split to many, uh, many subspecies in the region, yeah, and the blue banded pita is probably one of the more striking betas we have in our country. Yeah? Uh, it's really beautiful. Sweet it. Again, thank you very much for this photograph. It's amazing. Look at the beautiful legs and look at the beautiful toes. Uh, and of course, yeah, the, the blue bending across the chest. Yeah? Amazing. Ah, love this bird. Okay, so in essence, um, I wanted to share 
I wanted to take this time in this session with the, the ABF online talks you know, to, to share with you uh, some of the images or some of the photographs and birds that we found in, that's found in our country in Malaysia. But in essence, I also like to share with all my friends uh, listening today across the world uh, that, uh, that you know, we share the same interests, we share a common goal, we share the same passion. You know? Bird watching and wildlife tours is a sustainable money earner for locals. It's also an amazing hobby, passion for, to have. Yeah? So if you're stuck at home, not knowing what to do, uh, check out my presentation, go online, look at all the beautiful birds around your uh, in and around your neighborhood and your country, you know, and plan to have a life where you're going to go out and bird watch because you're going to get to see all this amazing stuff and all these birds are in all these beautiful uh, habitats and landscapes and there's, there's never a bad day when you go out in the great outdoor you know, to see birds, wildlife and to even enjoy yourself. So in essence, uh, my presentation, I want to just, I think, speak on all your behalf that it is a sustainable money in for locals, you know, and it's an amazing hobby to have. Uh, please enjoy it. Please come and support it. You know? And for my country, it has amazing ecotourism potentials. It has a variety of wildlife, indigenous and local communities, uh, dotted all along uh, our national parks and in the buffer zones. Uh, we have amazing natural landscapes. We have some of the most beautiful dive spots in the world. We have beautiful uh, highlands. We have beautiful lowlands, and mangroves. Peat swamps, you know, you name it, uh, we have it in terms of uh, tropical rainforest. Uh, we have delicious and, uh, and pretty cheap, affordable uh, meals uh, that anybody can have. Uh, come on over, uh, food is great here. Uh, logistically, it's easy to travel in Malaysia. The road signs are in English, the roads are pretty good. There's a lot of tolls on them. You have to pay the tolls, that's sometimes not very convenient. But the roads and highways are pretty easy. It takes you to bird watching destinations pretty well, yeah. But you also need a good bird guide. So please hire a local bird guide uh, and in, increase your experience when you bird watch. Yeah? Uh, my next point uh, in my power in this uh, presentation uh, for bird watching and bird tour operators, um, some of them are trying to uh, beginning to integrate uh, itineraries, uh, they're gonna integrate, get to, starting to integrate content. So a lot of companies are now also providing a lot more experience for people in the packages where they can spend time in local communities, uh, can do a bit of shopping and buying local products. Uh, and their yeah, itineraries are now using a lot of local restaurants and local foods. Yeah, so they're not depending so much on large uh, 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 hotels and, and resorts. Yeah. So I, get, I see a shift in, in, in local operators also integrating a lot of other things in their bird watching itinerary. So that's a good thing, yeah. So we must also try to always link local culture. We also try to link history, natural history, and otherwise uh, food, of course. And uh, especially in this COVID era, in this COVID era, we have to, we have to change. We have to adapt. We have to, rethink on how we can actually as bird watchers and as guides around the world uh, how do we make a make it a sustaining business even in this uh, scenario yeah so if you're a bird watcher you're starting to be a bird watcher this is a beautiful thing for you to start um, get get in contact with some of the operators and they will only tell you about all the nice things and and how affordable it is will be for you to come and travel once travel restrictions are lifted so get ready for it it's just about. It's just a matter of time when uh, the borders will open because it's just a matter of time we're gonna find uh, uh, we're gonna find ourselves uh, getting rid of this this COVID thing with and getting a, a cure and so on. Yeah. So let's just while well, in the meantime we can plan. We can start planning ourselves. We can start uh, charting our trips uh, and making making friends around the world. Yeah? Uh, my la my last point is. Just like a lot of countries around the world, Malaysia uh, needs to protect its natural ecosystems. Uh, we suffer, there's a lot of cases of poaching of wildlife and even birds. And there's a lot of forest conversion going on in my country. Uh, it's the same, I think, around the world. Uh, agriculture, plantations are taking over the lowland and uh, rainforest and so on. That's a big worry. It's been going on for many years. So together with a lot of friends around our country, 
people in the ecotourism industry, a lot of my friends around the area, <coughs> friends from Langkawi, friends from Taman Negara, people in the Dome, in Temenggo Lake, uh, yeah, in Bukit Tinggi, we are all trying our best to try to show the government that ecotourism sells. You can sustain, you can have a wonderful industry of, of ecotourism, bird watching and wildlife photography uh, if you give it a chance to develop. So my last, my last point is uh, to all Malaysians, we need to get together and need to promote our country as a beautiful ecotourism destination because we have some of the amazing stuff to showcase to the, our friends from around the world. And likewise, we can get a chance to even visit other countries. It'll be great. It makes the world a lot smaller. Yeah? So um, through bird watching, uh, we can stop uh, poaching. We can stop forest conversions from happening again. If you can show the government, we can show industry, we can show big industry that can, they should invest in ecotourism and invest in bird guides and bird watching and wildlife. Yeah? Why not? Yeah? So on behalf of uh, my fellow countrymen uh, from both uh, East and West Malaysia, uh, it is my honor uh, as a Malaysian and as a bird guide it's my honor and on behalf of all my friends uh, in this country, uh, in the industry, it, it was my honor to present you, my dear friends from across the world, my beautiful country, Malaysia, and all the goods, some of the goods that we have to offer you. Thank you very much. Q&A. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Like, uh, like we said earlier, Andrew could be the, the most attractive bird conservationist and bird guy in Malaysia. And after his presentation, I guess he proves himself. Okay. Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, any question for Andrew? Well, welcome to all the friends and fans of Andrew Sebastian. I Everyone is astounded with your beautiful presentation. <laughs> You're still digesting what you said. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I see some friends from uh, Hong Kong. Yeah, Samson. So many fans. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Samson, how are you doing? Samson is an amazing guy based in Hong Kong. He does a lot of tours to Africa too. He takes wonderful photo photographs, astronomy photographs. I'm a big fan of his and his wife and his son. You know, thank, thank you, Samson, for joining. Uh, Hong Kong is a wonderful place to visit you. Uh, I hope to see you here in Malaysia once uh, we have a cure and everybody gets to travel again. Yeah? So, Samson, come on over, my friend. Yeah, Andrew, please check the, the, the chat room. Uh, from Horacio. Yeah, uh, Horacio. Horacio. Why don't, yeah, why don't you ask a question yourself? Okay, uh, Horacio has asked me, how much is an average cost of 14 days trip in your country, all inclusive starting from Kuala Lumpur Airport? Well, if you're talking about only Peninsula Malaysia, if you're talking about Pen Peninsula Malaysia, the cost varies again. Uh, we have clients who, uh, who don't mind staying in a budget accommodation, and we have clients who also always want a little bit of comfort. Yeah? So you know this, you know this. Yeah? So the range would be between um, 2,000... 2,000 US to 4,000 US dollars for oh, a 14-day trip. Yeah, depends on, on depends on again uh, what kind of accommodation we we, we use. Yeah? Thank you, uh, thank you, Horacio. Yeah, okay. Andrew, please stop sharing your screen, then we can see everybody. Okay, hey, we have a you. question from Mardi Shan of uh, Cambodia, Mardi. Party. Yeah, Kim Ripsu, everybody. Yep. Can can you hear my voice? Thank yes, you, yes. very well. Very okay, well. I think I, I have missed the, 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 the video join for many, many times, but I also try to follow on the Facebook Live as well. Yeah, so good evening to Andrew mm -hmm. and thank you for your great presentation. And I have uh, one question. <laughs> I have been to uh, Borneo like two times. And the first time I maybe spent, you know, to visit so many different places. And then I missed the uh, Bornean Bristol hat. <laughs> uh, Rainforest Discovery Center, something like that. 
So my question is like between that area and Danum Valley, which is the good place to see the Bonnie and Bristol head. If I have a chance to go to the Bonnie again, I will go to, to get that bird. You know, you know, Danum Valley and uh, Rainforest Discovery Center. You know, these are the two beautiful sites to visit. You know, you cannot go wrong if you are in when, any one of these two places. You know, you cannot go wrong because there's just so much of things to see. Yeah. So the Bonnie and Bristol head. Some people who are first timers to to the RBC, they go up on the canopy walkway and the first bird they see is the Bristol Head, you know. And some people go there three, four times and they miss it. Yeah. So again, you know this, everybody, Madi is a wonderful guy based in Cambodia. Uh, yeah, he's going to visit his beautiful country. There's a lot of amazing birds there too. So Madi, you know this, it's sometimes a game of luck, but if I were you, if I have a choice between uh, uh, Rainforest Discovery Center and Danum Valley, there's a lot more things. Danum Valley is much bigger in terms of its, its, its size. Yeah? So you can venture and do a lot more stuff in Danum Valley. And of course, I have not seen the clouded leopard. So personally, I love Rainforest Discovery Center. It makes me very easy because I go up on the canopy walkway. It's so comfortable. You just sit there and relax and you wait for birds to come to you and have a drink and, and gossip with your friends, you know. But Danum Valley is really amazing because it's a beautiful forest. There's so much stuff to see in there, yeah. So, spoil for choice, yeah. Go to both sides. And good luck, Mani. Next time, we'll be good together, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have another question from Lei Win of Myanmar. Ah, uh, yes. Hi. And it was a very good presentation. And there's a lot of to cover the uh, burning sites in Malaysia. Both of the mainland, and Borneo. And I'm interested in, uh, in the to, uh, to visit in Balum Temegor. And how many days would you recommend uh, to cover the species, especially the hornbill species in, in Balum Temegor well, State Park? Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Uh, although, if you're a photographer, it's a bit challenging because in, in, in Royal Balum, you're on the boat all the time. Most of the time you're on the boat, yeah? So the boat is... So if you're a photographer, sometimes it's very challenging. If you're a bird watcher, it's so much easier. And again, I've been running the Hornbill, Royal Balloon Hornbill Expedition for the past four years now. And there are some years, and some of them have joined. Uh, oh, my good friend Amon, he has joined me from... Well, he's joined me before. Some, uh, most of the times when we are on the small boats in the expedition, everybody goes in different sites to, to record Hornbills, right? So some boats come back with eight species in the day, you know, some boats come back with six. But on the bad day in Royal Bloom on the lake, on the bad day, I think I experienced it last year. One of my trips I went and we only saw four species. Mm -hmm. Only four. Yeah. That was a bad day because it was raining and we didn't have a lot of time. Yeah. So if you if you if you plan yourself nicely, if you spend three full days in Royal Bloom. And maybe if you match it with Kenyan Lake or something like that, you know, chances of seeing of you seeing ten species is pretty good, especially between the months of July, August, September, and October. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, thank you. It's it's there's never a bad day in the rainforest. Yeah. Every day out there in the rainforest is a blessing, and every day is a good day. Hi, Amon from Thailand. How are you, my friend? Sawadee <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Our My friend from SST Tourism is asking how many days are needed to cover, uh, to see all the endemic species of Malaysia? See all? <laughs> uh, <laughs> three years. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to, to get a good number of, of endemics, of course, you need to spend a lot more time in Borneo, uh, in Sabah. Yeah? So 14 days in Borneo will be pretty good. In Peninsular Malaysia, maybe seven or eight days yes, in selected sites to get our endemics. Yeah, so uh, maybe ten days, twelve days. I think it's pretty good. And, and again, uh, even if it's not endemic uh, to Malaysia, it's usually Sunda endemic, which means it's only found in three or four different countries only. Yeah? So the good thing about birding in Malaysia and of course in some of the countries in Asia, you get also Sunda endemics. So if you're coming from Europe, if you're coming from Americas, you know. A lot of birds are new to you, yeah. So 
it's always good. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Yeah, thank you. Samson wants to say something. Samson. <laughs> Samson, what do you want to say? <laughs> Eight times. Well, if you come on the ninth time, Samson, I'm <laughs> He's been to IRDC eight times as Mr. Uh, from uh, Myanmar, from Mo, Mo Ong. How many official birding tour operators in your country? Well, uh, that's a good thing. That's a good question. In Peninsula Malaysia, it's very, very few. It's less than 10 uh, uh, tour companies that, that focus on uh, birds and wildlife. Yeah, less than 10. But in Borneo, in Sabah, it's pretty good. It's very well developed. So there's a lot more tool companies, and there's a lot of amazing guides in Sabah and Sarawak. Yeah? More, mostly more in, in Sabah, I would say this. A lot of guides, a lot of companies there that do a lot of good work, really quality. Uh, there's an, uh, a question from Kusum. Kusum? Hi. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Andrew. Kusum is a good friend and he's, he's an amazing guy. He lives in this beautiful place called Sri Lanka. Uh, it has the biggest land animal. He has the biggest sea animals. And, you know, it's a beautiful place to go. Everybody should go to Sri Lanka. It's an amazing place. Okay, okay Kusum, your question for me. Okay, thank you for the wonderful presentation. I loved it. Uh, and uh, I have been to so many places. Uh, and I uh, want to know whether when you go to Royal Bellum State Park, do you have to stay in the houseboat for two or three days? Well, a good, a good point. Thank you. Uh, houseboat is one of the very interesting places, uh, ways to travel in Royal Bloom because it's a big lake. Yeah? But uh, the state park also has campsites. Some of the campsites have chalets. Yeah? So chalets and even camping grounds. A lot of fishing groups go there on fishing tours and they usually camp out in the campsites, which is far away from people. And the good thing about Royal Bloom State Park, and this is one of the best features, once you got into the boat or the houseboat and you're going into Royal Bloom State Park and you make the first corner in the first half an hour, you lose all Wi-Fi connection. There's no mobile phone service. So you're cut off from the world in half an hour and you get to spend bird watching without the phone ringing or without to answer emails or answer your bosses or your girlfriends or your wives or husbands. Yeah. So uh, you do not have to stay on the houseboat. It's a little expensive, the houseboat, but you can stay in a very, very affordable and cheap campsites and uh, uh, the state park uh, chalets. It's pretty decent, uh, simple rooms, but it's amazing for, for the price that you have to pay. It's very, very cheap. And uh, where uh, where do you enter the state park in Garrick? Garrick. From Greek, you stop in the Bunding Island, which is in the middle. It's, there's a big, there is a beautiful jetty in the called Pulau Banding. I think you've been there before. Uh, yeah, so yeah. That's the only entry point, yeah? You go up to Royal Bloom or you go south to the Mungo Lake area. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Kusum. Thank you very much for listening in. Johnny, is that you? Yes. <laughs> are, you, are you in Uganda or are you in Ethiopia or... You're muted. <laughs> if you remember Jimbaziga's house? Yes, Kibali. Yes, I remember a photograph of you right at this day where I'm standing. Hi. Everybody, this is Johnny. He, he's, he lives, he, he's based in Uganda. He's one of the best guides that you can get in Uganda. He can show you all the beautiful primates that they have in Uganda. It's beautiful, yeah. And of course, he can show you the shoe build and all the amazing birds that you can that you ever want to see in Africa and Uganda. So that, that's a guy, Johnny. Yeah. Use him. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny. Hey, good luck, man. I actually I actually saw the shoe bill on Sunday and oh. it performed for us and we caught a lung fish and killed it and swallowed in front of us. Wow. You got it on video? Yes, I got him on video. Ah, okay. Johnny, next month you give a talk also, okay? Yeah, definitely, no problem. That was a video, okay? <laughs> yes. Thank you, John. Hey, good luck, man. You're welcome. Thanks, Sebastian. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Dr. Huang in Korea, in South Korea. How are you, sir? I, 
you're, you're muted. Can't hear you. Dr. Huang? You're muted. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Hello, Dr. Huang. Okay. You escaped us, yeah. Any, any, other, any other questions? Uh, there's, there's one more, one more oh, question. Yeah. yeah. What um, destination or birding spot do you recommend for first time uh, first timers to your country? Well, uh, I would say it's very nice when you take a flight or if it's a long haul flight, you reach Kuala Lumpur. You re it's, it's sometimes a bit difficult for people to adapt to the, to the humidity of Malaysia. I don't know, it's the same in a lot of Asian countries. So when long haul clients come in, I usually want to start by taking up them up to the highlands where it's cool and nice, yeah? Because I don't want to kill them immediately when they get off the plane, yeah? So the first place I think I take them is, uh, it's just two hours drive from Kuala Lumpur Airport is Fraser Seal, yeah? And Fraser Seal, a lot of beautiful, colorful birds, pretty easy to see uh, along the roadsides. Yeah? You don't have to walk into the trails, you just walk along the roadsides. So that would be a very good starting point for those who are first time to, to Malaysia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. Are there any more questions to Andrew? If there's no question, then we're gonna thank you, Andrew, for his great presentation. Thank you, thank you. The most attractive Bird guys in Malaysia. <laughs> All right. So um, thank you very let's much. Yeah. Well, uh, two things before we, we, we go. One of one, one of them is uh, uh, Mike. Where are we? Where are we going next week? Where do you want to go? We're going to Central America, to oh, the yeah. country of Guatemala. Uh, oh. Wow. Our friend Benedicto Grijalva is here tonight with us. He's uh, introducing his friend. Maynor Obando will be the speaker next Saturday, next Friday. Right. We look forward to that. Guatemala, ooh, wow. Hey, so um, as usual, uh, before we go, we gotta take a group photo, okay? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please look at the camera. Washington. <laughs> yes. Look at the camera, please. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one, smile. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you yeah. guys next week. Have a nice weekend. Bye. 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 Thanks, Andrew. Everybody, bye. 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 <laughs>